Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Welcome to Texas Toast. I'm Miss Helen, and I have some multiple guests for the podcast for this episode um, from the Wilder Blue. Welcome, Paul, Zane, and Sean. Hello. So, how's everybody doing? Not too bad. Pretty good. Not too bad. Let's start first about how you all come together. Of course, um, we'll get to the album and the music. Your music is just beyond words. I don't even know what to say. I've been a fan of Paul forever, Zane as well. And um, I know Paul and Zane both had their solo careers, but how did you guys all come together to form the Wilder Blue? Well, um, so this is Zane and I kind of had the idea about three years ago. I'd been, honestly, I read Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run autobiography, which was very inspiring. He was always just really shooting for the moon when it came to music. Like he wasn't just trying to, oh, I'm going to make an album or make a song. He was always trying to make like iconic music for all time, you know? And I, it, that and a few other things that I was thinking about got me thinking, man, what can I really do to just take my whole music to a, a complete another level? And I'd always had this idea of being in a, a harmony driven group. I grew up um, in the Church of Christ where harmonies are a big deal. And I, I, after doing the Texas music scene for seven or eight years, I thought maybe I know enough people where I could actually get them to be in a band with me. And so I gave Paul a call. He was one of the first ones I thought of because he plays so many instruments and sings and writes songs. And uh, yeah, so I, I just texted Paul kind of out of the blue and said, we should put a band together and take over the world. And what did you think about that, Paul? I thought that was crazy uh, at first. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I had a great gig playing with Kevin Fowler uh, at the time. And, uh, but I also thought it was a, such a cool opportunity. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up after I thought about it for a second. So I was like, yeah, we got to do that for sure. It'd be amazing to be a part of the uh, a group with Zane Williams, who I've always, you know, respected and, and loved his music for a long time. So, uh, so yeah, I, I was like, yeah, I'm in. And then I know the drummer we should get. Uh, if you want a singing drummer, there's only one that is uh, that comes to mind. That's Lyndon Hughes. So we found him next. <laughs> yeah. And Sean, you're the bass. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and when it comes to Sean, by the time Sean came into the picture, we were struggling, dude. We, we had... Lyndon on board and we had Andy Rogers playing banjo and dobro but we were struggling finding a bass player we went through a couple of different guys that didn't work out and we had some gigs coming up and we were like shucks man it's time to find somebody <clears throat> but we wanted somebody that could sing and bring a lot to the table and we saw that Sean had just quit the Bree Bagwell gig that he was uh, a part of. And I had played some gigs with Bree before and seen Sean. And I knew that he sang high harmony above Bree. And I was like, man, we got to just please let this work out for that this guy will want to want to do it. So he was the last piece of the puzzle. Okay. And so Sean, you're, you're the bass player. And what, what was, I mean, was it an easy decision for you to, to go into this project and this new band with the Wilder Blue? uh yes and no i mean it it was it was a shock to have zane call me because i didn't have zane's number i just got a random phone call that i decided to answer oh. one day <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know on the other end hey this is zane williams i was like wow okay sure and he sold me on it pretty quickly by saying he wanted to, he wanted to have a band that was like the texas country eagles mm -hmm. and i mean he said he said the word eagles and i was in <laughs> in my mind i was whatever it takes i'll i will make this work 
So you had uh, your first album out, Hill Country, which I loved, Palomino Gold and Adios. I believe we talked about that, Paul, when you were on the podcast. Now, your new album is just, it's just phenomenal. And it's so interesting how it all came about. It's in self-titled The Wilder Blue. And so it was basically a fan-funded project, which gave y'all a little bit of freedom to work on it in bits and pieces. So talk about how y'all developed and came together to put all the tracks on your current album. Yeah, well, we started uh, a thing about a year and a half ago where it's like a fan club, but it's also kind of like Patreon, if people are familiar with that, or Kickstarter. But it, it's a, but it's all through our own website, which is nice because we control it all. And so what we do is um, we have these subscribers that pay us five bucks a month, or they can do more if they want just to support the music. And then we give them a brand new song every month. And the subscription money is really our budget for going into the studio and recording new music. So we, we began that in earnest last year. And, you know, we, we, the first song we released was feeling the miles mm -hmm. to the hideout. And then we went from there and this album that comes out March 25th, is basically the 12 songs that we made each month of last year and released to our fan subscribers. Nice. And so you did your recording in Denton at Echo Lab Studios, and y'all also produced it as well. And you did it on tape? We did a we lot did. more on tape than we've ever done. Yeah, Feeling the Miles was completely done to tape. And um, we had never done that. I'd never done that before. Had you done that before, Paul? Not completely, no. Not a whole yeah. song. Yeah. It, it was it was fun because it, it's, um, you know, when you're on the computer, there's the tendency to just do a whole bunch of takes and then you know that you can go through it all later and pick which one was the best. But you're, you're, you're unlimited on the number of times that you can do it. But on tape, it's not the case. You, you're, you're limited in what you can keep and so you really have to just look around the room and say, well, was that the take, boys? What do you think? Can we do it better than that, you know? And, and then when you're done, it's, it's done. And I, I thought, well, that was one of the cool things about feeling the miles is it, you know, once we came out of the studio after that first two and a half days of working on it, I mean, there was some mixing involved, but other than that, it, it didn't change a lot because I think the the drums and bass are pretty much one s solid take all the way through on that one, and um, so yeah, it was. It, it's nice to do that since we're a band. I don't think you could really do that approach. It'd be a lot harder to do that approach with hired gun studio players. Right, right. And speaking of feeling the miles, I had that on my list to talk about the background and songwriting on that particular song. Oh, okay. Well, I I wrote that one and. Um, when I first wrote it, it was kind of a finger picking James Taylor y type of feel. Very uh, not all that different from a song, another song on our album called Oki Soldier. Mm -hmm. But that because works. we already had Oki Soldier and we already had um, another song called Birds of Youth that's kind of in that vein as well, I was like, man, this, I don't, we don't need another finger picking singer songwriter song. I was like, what? I want, I want Sean to be playing some cool bass line and I want Lyndon to be grooving on the drums. And so I actually came up with the, an idea for retooling the groove. And then once we came up with that, I ended up having to rewrite some of the lyrics and the melody to, to do it. So what you hear is actually a, uh, the second version is like a 2.0 version of that song. And the original version, we is one of the things that we also posted on our our fan subscription site. We that's another thing that we give them is like al alternate versions that didn't make the record. So that's it's kind of fun for them to get to hear how it developed. But it did it did it was a journey on that song to where we ended up. Another one I want to talk about, of course, we we pre, we talked about it here and played it already on Texas on tap. But the first time I heard Wave Dancer, I just 
I mean, that was such in my wheelhouse. That is such a beautiful song with such a meaning and the harmonies and the instruments. So tell me about Wave Dancer. I can't wait to hear about how that one came about. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm talking too much. Paul, you want to take that one? Uh, not really, because only you know how that came about. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. wrote that one. I, I guess I, I wrote that one. And um, it's one of those that I don't really even remember where the idea came from. I'm pretty sure I was sitting where I'm sitting right now here in my shed in my backyard. I, I do remember that it was kind of in the spring of 2020, like during the kind of coronavirus lockdown where we were, I think all really trying to stay home and not really go anywhere. Um, and I was just thinking of just these crazy times in which we live and, um, and how I don't, I don't always feel like I belong on one side or the other. And everything's always so polarized, but I don't always know which side I belong to. And I thought, you know, really, I just got to follow my own thing and do, do my own, um, what I know is right and what I believe in. And, and, um, and yeah, that, I just kind of wrote that experience, uh, thinking of those kind of thoughts. And I, I sang it at a sound check and Lyndon, our drummer was like, did you write that? Please tell me you wrote that. Is that one of yours? <laughs> I, was like, yeah, I read that. Well, it's, it's beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. And another one I want to talk about is Ghost of Lincoln. And I specifically want to talk, and that's such a happy song. It just had me smiling. But I want to talk about the animated video that y'all have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was too cute. How did, how did that come <laughs> about, guys? Uh, well, I think the impetus to getting that video was actually our tour manager sent us a link to this website. Uh, called Scene Films. I'm sure Stefano won't mind the plug. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, he was just like, this is some cool, this is a cool idea this guy does all stop motion paper animation. All of that stuff is made of actual paper that we've been overlaid onto. But he's a guy out in Italy who does that as that's his thing. <laughs> and so we got a hold of him and he sent us back that uh you know honey i shrunk the kids like type idea yes. video and that's what we did <laughs> oh absolutely love that one love it so what was and, it like oh go ahead i'm sorry well i just wanted to add the little detail that we had to send stefano a bunch of green screen footage that we filmed here in texas uh, oh boy and we we painted a treadmill green so that we could be walking and sort of looking around this fantastic landscape and Paul uh, had this bum leg, he had this fractured uh, femur. And so he ended up having to get, Sean gave him a piggyback ride um, when we were running from the lawnmower. So it, when so you see that in the video, you may wonder. Treadmill. Yes, it, treadmill. Sean was With Paul swinging around wildly. <laughs> on a treadmill, uh, pretending to run from a lawnmower. And it was actually quite dangerous. I'm, I'm glad that we didn't break Paul further. So Paul, well. yeah yeah because i mean <laughs> when i saw you in november you were on those crutches you just you did all kind of stuff no matter what even with the injury paul yeah i shouldn't have done all that probably uh <laughs> climbed a mountain and some other stuff technically uh with a broken leg but i guess it's better now i don't know so it doesn't hurt so it's good well, i know i just kept <laughs> i kept wishing you well don't, didn't need to tell me the story just glad that you're feeling better and that and hopefully you're you're getting completely healed so when y'all all first came together and maybe you sat down and you were just kind of picking and throwing around ideas what did y'all think when you first heard all your har harmony together i think one of the first times i remember uh was when sean rodriguez who like i said he was the last guy to come on board he came to meet us in the studio because we were already wrapping up our first album um and we had him come to play on a couple of tunes and just kind of get to know him better and we just stood out in the lobby of the recording studio we were like hey dude let's just let's just sing seven bridges road you know i mean oh, it's, wow. it's cheesy but Everybody just pick a part. Let's just do it for fun. And um, you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was like, <laughs> I, I don't even think we decided who was singing what part or whatever. It was just like, everybody just pick a part and let's just see how it goes. And I thought it sounded 
pretty bad, uh, pretty awesome. Pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I would love to have been there for that because your harmonies are just, I mean, they're just so stirring to the soul. Y'all just, y'all, your sound is amazing. And so you're getting a lot of recognition and one person in particular kind of called y'all out and has become a fan of the Wilder Blue and that's Luke Combs. Yeah. Yeah, we got a, uh, we have a band chat and our tour manager sent us a screenshot of a tweet from Luke Combs where he was uh, just saying how much he loved our album, couldn't stop listening to it. And we were all shocked because none of us know knew Luke at the time and didn't know that he was listening to us at all. And um, we ended up, uh, I ended up getting t in touch with him. And I've, I've, since then I've met him, been to his house and we wrote a song together that I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day, but it was, um, <laughs> Maybe it will someday, and it was definitely fun hanging out with him. But it's just that was pretty cool to have basically the biggest guy in country music just out of the blue, just be like, "Dude, I dig what these guys are doing." Especially since it was 2020. That was the summer of 2020, and we'd put the album out with really no budget uh, for marketing or promotion because at the time we didn't even know when we were going to be able to ever get back on the road. We didn't know how we were going to pay our own bills. You know, we were all scrambling to figure out how to even pay rent and everything so uh to have him give us a shout out like that and and give us a boost that way really helped a lot so y'all are on the road i see you have a, a lot of dates for um, different venues and shows in particular there's one close to me coming to the kenny store which i would love to go see but i've told all my friends down that way to go see y'all but so what are right. your live shows like and what in particular what which set list like paul you take that one yeah uh <clears throat> well as we were talking about it's a lot of harmonies which is is real fun um and as far as our set lists i mean we also play like everybody plays a few instruments um especially now that Lyndon might be playing some mandolin i think everybody plays at least two instruments for show, uh, maybe not Sean. Anyways, the point is we're switching hey, up. Yeah, man, I have we're the harmonica back there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Uh, and we, you know, we play mostly our own music uh, with a couple of, uh, you know, kind of fun covers in there uh, that maybe yeah. Lyndon will sing sometimes. Uh, but you know, we we try to keep it uh, energetic, but also uh, original. Like we're playing mostly our own our own stuff, which we hope people will like. I think everyone's liking it. I mean, what's not to like? So who are you looking forward to sharing the stage with or a particular event or venue that you have coming up that it's like, yeah, that's that's the one we really got our radar on. Hmm. Well, next week we're going to be uh, in Abilene, Texas at the Outlaws and Legends Festival. And we're the way that our schedule ended up working out, we're going to have a day off there to hang out after we play. And so we're looking forward, I'm looking forward to seeing Brent Cobb um, a, and uh, the Steelwoods are going to be there. Um, that's a band that we've done several opening shows with and hung out with some. And uh, that, I mean, I, I forget who's headlining the night we're there. It's either Robert Earl Keane or uh, Sammy Kershaw. And anyway, I, I'll get it screwed up if I say it, but Anyway, the point is that's that's a that festival I feel like does a great job of having kind of mainstream country legends, but also Texas country, red dirt people, and a good mix between you know legit singer songwriters and you know high energy bands and all that stuff. Oh, Fowler's going to be there, Kevin Fowler, um, Paul's old boss, oh, and so boy. yeah, <laughs> we'll probably probably get old Paul I bet Paul will get called up there to do a little picture. I bet I bet he will for sure and uh one of another thing I I've, I'm kind of going back skipping around but I wanted to ask you what's the significance of the the Wilder Blue the the, the name coming up with the name of the band <clears throat> well um we took that phrase from a song of ours Dixie Darlin um the chorus um is Dixie Darling, did you find what you were after? A greener pasture, a wilder blue. Um, and 
I don't know, something about that phrase, we we just kind of appealed to us. It was always on our list. Boy, choosing a, a name for a band in this day and age where everything <laughs> seems like it's already taken and you're trying to find one where you can get the website and the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitter and all that stuff. It was, uh-huh. it was a real adventure. But um, I, think, I think the Wilder Blue uh ended up being a great fit for our music too because it's it's kind of our music is pretty diverse and i think the wilder blue can kind of be any kind of music you know and um it's it's good we've we've had that name for a year and a half now and we're we're feeling good about it Mm -hmm. I, i like it I like it. So with all of your creativity and with all of y'all coming together, how do you navigate those waters with creativity and people throwing out ideas and, and disseminating all of that to put it together? Uh, well, democracy is hard. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much. Uh, I'd say we 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 do a pretty good job of. The, the ideal is say what you think, say what you really think, even if it's critical and just nobody get their feelings hurt too bad. I mean, that's, it's easier to, to say that than to do it. But, but really, I think that's the best way for us to make the best music possible is to be honest. And if we can, if we can make a piece of recorded music that everybody is genuinely excited about, then I feel like that's where number one, we're we're making music that is uniquely us, because how what the five of us like is is a sound that's inherently not going to be anybody else's sound. But it's also true, I think, that if all five of us are digging it, that um it's most likely to be uh something that the audience enjoys and relates to. So we it does happen sometimes that somebody's excited about it and some other people are not. And we just I have to try to bear down and see if we can make everybody happy with it. You know, is there some, I'm always thinking, is there something we can change? Is there, can we rewrite it? Can we change it? Can we do this to, to make sure that everybody's uh, creatively excited about it? But it's, yeah. that is a, a hard, hard, it's hard to get five people, you know, all on the same page, but that's also the, the fun part about being in a band you know yeah and that grinding through that process and going through that that's usually what gets you your best product so and definitely and definitely there's nobody else that sounds like y'all it's just it's the it's the best thing I've heard in forever and um wow y'all are just doing some great things so anything in particular up and coming that we need to know about or are you just still just getting out there and promoting the the new stuff yeah, I mean, we've got the, the new album officially comes out March 25th. So we've already released about five songs uh, digitally on Spotify and iTunes and stuff. But the whole album comes out March 25th. Um, we're doing pre-sales on our, on our website, and that always helps us out with cash flow. So we're anybody that, that pre-orders the CD, we're, we're all autographing it. And, and I'm sending those out this week. Um, but other than that, we, we have a full tour schedule of album release shows. Um, a lot of them are in Texas, but we're also doing a run to Montana. And later this year, we'll be going all over the country, East Coast, West Coast. Uh, we're playing the Alaska State Fair, I believe. Wow. Um, and that'll be a first for a lot of us. But uh, mm-hmm. people can find out about all that different stuff on our website, thewilderblue.com. And, um, you know, I would encourage people. We've already posted the, the new album isn't even out. We've already posted new stuff other than that to our fan subscribers uh, on uh, we call it the hideout. So if anybody wants to become a hideout member, they can check that out at thewilderblue.com. Okay. Well, Sean, Paul, and Zane, thank you so much for taking the time. It's truly an honor and uh, keep up the good work and loving the music. Just love listening to it. And it's, it's different. Nobody else has what y'all have. So thank you so much for joining us on Texas Toast.
Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope, hope you get to serenade you sometime soon. I do too. I do too. With a heavy tongue, she knew where I was from. As she left, I dared to say. Take away the-